Hi, this is Dave. We're going to do a little wargaming terrain project today. This is going to be a desert oasis, and it's going to be for the HeroScape game, although you can use the things that we're going to be doing in principle for any kind of wargaming terrain. This project was inspired, like a lot of the things that I do, by something I found when I was bumming around a thrift store. Got um, salt and pepper shakers shaped like Egyptian obelisks. So that has inspired the desert theme, but we're going to start out by doing some rock formations. And for this we're going to be using some extra rock forms from the HeroScape Battle for the Underdark set. That's the master set that was released shortly before the game was discontinued, so you can still find it. And you can find a lot of these pieces on sites that sell individual miniatures for a pretty reasonable price. Places like Miniature Market or Troll and Toad. For this piece of terrain, and with a lot of the things we're going to do, we're going to start out painting it dark and then go dark to light. So because I want kind of a dirt and sand vibe to it, I'm going to start with just some plain old brown paint. And especially for terrain, you don't need the fancy expensive Games Workshop type paints, although those, those can be better for miniatures. And we are just going to paint this thing up nice and brown and definitely make sure that you get inside all the little cracks and recesses because what's going to happen is we're going to come back later and we're going to go over the top with lighter colors in lighter layers and all these deep areas that are filled with a darker shade are going to look like shadowing and it's going to give it a very natural effect and we'll talk a little bit more later about how that works and why but in general when you're doing miniatures you want to go from dark to light on your layers it really brings out the details. All right, we've got a nice brown piece of terrain. And while we're at it, we're going to go ahead and do our obelisk because we're going to use the same painting principle. Now, as you see, this has a couple of holes in it for the pepper to come out. We don't care about that. So we're going to plug these. I am going to use green putty some gamers will just call it green stuff or some hobbyists you can get this fairly cheaply at just about any hobby shop you don't have to use this you could you know plug a little sand and some glue in there dribble some super glue gel into the hole but this is probably the easiest way to do it it dries quickly it fills the hole it's not too messy and it won't get away from you and it's easiest to paint over So what we'll do, we'll put a little on there, let it dry. And while that is drying up, we will paint over the sides. Now as you can see, this has some features that we're going to hopefully bring out. It's not going to be as detailed as, say, a miniature with a lot of ridges, but hopefully it'll still look nice. So we want, just like with our terrain piece, to start with a dark color and we're going to want to really get good coverage and that way when we come back over it later with a lighter color all these raised portions are going to stand out so it's going to hopefully highlight these different designs in the sides and it's going to be a little funky down here at the bottom don't know how well you can see it but there's pseudo egyptian writing in there but it's recessed rather than raised so we're going to have to be really careful with the way we uh we do our painting to make sure to get that filled with a dark color and then make sure the lighter colors get around but not in those grooves so we can see the markings. Now as you can see this being ceramic the paint is going on very thin. We don't want to get messy and glop it up so what we'll do is go with a few light layers coats that is until we get it nice and uniform. All right, we have our two terrain pieces. They've been given some time to dry, and we're ready to do the next layer. Now, for this one, I've used the, started with the same brown color that we used on the base coat, and I've mixed in some orange and some yellow, in part, to brighten it and to give it just kind of the sun-baked look. With this obelisk, I don't want the white marble Washington Monument look. I want it to look like it's old and weathered and the sun and the earth and the wind have been beating it down. So we're going to use a technique called dry brushing and it is a very literal technique. You want a dry brush. I'm going to put it in the paint that I've mixed up and then I'm going to scrape almost all of it off. 
and I'm even going to run it on my sheet of paper here until just about everything is gone and the idea is that then when you drag it across your terrain you can see that the lighter paint doesn't run down into the cracks so we're actually getting a nicely highlighted piece and when a person looks at your piece of terrain it emphasizes three-dimensional quality of it and it gives the illusion of light shining on it and shadows being raised in the different indentations and we'll do this at least one more time after this layer where we'll add in something to brighten it yet again still working from the same base color so that we really get the lightest paint on the highest points and so the um, the figure really looks three-dimensional so we'll get the uh, first layer of paint on this piece and then we will move along to our main piece and kind of do the same thing I always start if I'm not sure if I have enough or too much paint on here on somewhere flat before I go over my textured areas and I don't know if you can see but when I dragged that the paint across here it not only highlighted this round part but you can see there's a little marking in here an X with a little dot almost like a human shape that came out because I was I had so little paint on there that it highlighted the raised portion without getting down into that little fine marking there see I had a little too much there so I'm going to go back up to the top and knock it off and we're going to keep coming down oh, got a little rough there and you see how it's starting to bring out all these markings and you couldn't really see them when the piece was just plain white and now you're going to be able to see them from a bit of a distance let's get a little paint on here and then try out this writing see how that's going to go and see how this brings out the characters but the key is to have very very little paint you do not want it to fill any low surfaces those indentations need to stay dark all right we finished our first layer of dry brushed highlights and we're going to go again and we want to brighten it up so I've added a lot of yellow again still using the base color that we started with we started with brown and then to that brown we added some orange and some yellow now from to that paint we're going to add just yellow you don't want a dramatic color change because again the whole purpose of the dry brushing and going from darker to lighter is to make it look like the piece is almost uniform in color and that the darker bits are due to shadowing and to show the depth and it would only be it looking it up close that you can see that the colors really do vary so again with each progressive layer we go lighter in color and lighter in the amount of paint that we use so I want to be very careful what I put on here so drag most of it off and then just giving it a light touch and I'm just going to mainly emphasize the areas where there are some sharp lines that we can really make stand out so anywhere I see these dark vertical lines I'm going to drag a little of this brighter color onto there I'm not going to try to get complete coverage this is just to highlight the highest points and to bring out the lines of the piece and notice how I'm going across the indentations so I can try to get the paint, the bright paint on either side and really make it stand out. So if you can see, what I've done is we've got the dark brown that we started with in all these recessed areas and we've got the next step up, the brown and orange and yellow mix and then the yellow 
the high yellow part that I just put on is only on the highest points and edges in the little tops so it really makes these lines stand out and we're going to try to do the same thing now with our main piece. Again, we're going to drag most of the paint off. I'm going to go up top to get rid of more of it on these smooth areas. And then with a very light touch so as not to lose our details. This is just to emphasize the cool parts of the piece and make sure that the features stand out at a glance. And maybe you can see how we're really starting to bring out the markings in some of these where they would not have been visible at all had we just left the piece its original white color or just painted it with one single uniform color. Now we're starting to give the illusion of cracks in the surface, and the illusion of shadow and really drawing out all the different features. So this $2.99 set of used salt shakers that the original owner apparently was embarrassed to even put out because they appear to be brand new is turning into a pretty cool piece for your war games and this is where I have to resist temptation to overload it. I've, I've done a pretty good job it's not professional, but all the parts I wanted to stand out are standing out. Some of the fine details are showing. And if I succumb to temptation and put too much more paint on there, some of my highlighting is going to run down into cracks and mess it up. So I'm going to make myself stop here and move on to the next thing.